up guys it's your girl Megan so for this rainy gloomy cold Sunday or week to come I wanted something a little bit more hearty and comforting so I'm making homemade um, chicken and dumpling this week yes there are many variations to this recipe some of which you may have used before some of which you may have not have used before um, I remember my godmother, who was just like a grandmother to me, making these when I was little and like sitting there watching her make them. But of course, I was so young that I didn't quite get the recipe. I, after like years and playing around with it and making it my own, I kind of came up with something that I like. So it looks like a lot of things, but it's really not. Majority of it is just seasonings, and those are like what seasonings you want to use and seasonings to taste and whatever so um big thing is your chicken and your veggies if you want to use veggies so i have about six uh chicken thighs here that have been cleaned and washed i didn't remove all of the fat like i normally do because i'm boiling them so i kind of want to make my own broth so i kind of left some of the fat in there well a lot of the fat in there um, so I have about six of those. You can use the skinless, boneless ones. But you be still. <laughs> you can use about six. You can use um, chicken breast. See, you even got me all. Hey, don't blame it on you me. Did. You keep going. <laughs> cameraman sitting back here doing his job. You keep moving. No, you keep going. <laughs> oh, you can use um, chicken breast. Damn, that's what I was trying to say. You can use chicken breast if you want. Um, but I just feel like chicken thighs, of course you guys know that they are fattier because dark meat is fattier and all that good deliciousness. So using that, you can also use a whole chicken if you have one in your freezer and stuff. Another reason for this recipe, it ain't a pay week. So we got to make do with what we got in there to try to make it stretch throughout the week. So hey. We, make we it got do what it do, baby. Alright, so <laughs> like I said, we got six. Um, Six or seven, I can't remember. We'll see when we go. We got some chicken thighs. Some chicken thighs with the skin, and once we boil them, of course, we'll debone them, de skin them, shred them, and good to go. I have one whole medium to large onion, uh, some baby carrots that I chopped up. I used probably about 10 baby carrots, three to four ribs of celery. So, I'm going to have some chicken broth on standby. May not need it, may not, but I'll have extra. Some onion soup mix, chicken bouillon, bay leaves, salt, uh, cream of chicken soup. We have minced garlic, we have parsley, thyme, black pepper, paprika, and I believe that's garlic. Yes. Um, so that's it. So I'm gonna go in and drop these in there to boil and I'll meet you at the stove. Okay, so I'm gonna drop in the chicken. Um, don't know how much water that is at the moment. You just need enough to cover the chicken and I'm gonna probably add a little bit more. Wash your hands. I forgot to mention we need a half a stick of butter. Unsalted, salted, whichever floats your boat. Um, to that, I'm going to add some salt. Also add in two bay leaves. Three. <laughs> For good measure. Hush mouth. Yeah, I like this type of season. Yeah. <laughs> One and two here. <laughs> Although I have onion, I'm still adding a pack of onion soup mix. I usually use this a lot when I'm cooking. You got me to start using it. Yep. I use it when like we saute like our veggies and like green beans and stuff like that. Anywho, so. Down, dump 
these in here before I add in the other seasonings and some people wait to add their veggies in after you know your meat and stuff has um, boiled but I want my veggies to be seasoned too so why not throw them in there Go ahead, give it a good little stir there. And this is pepper. Pepper. Got some minced garlic here. Bless you. Your favorite? Parsley for color. That's about all it is. Hey. For some color. Don't worry about it. It's good color. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good dish here, you come with that parsley. Hey, you eat it though, don't you? I can't taste it. Don't matter. Some garlic powder. Yeah, that's got to cook, cook, cook. Get all the good flavors mixed in together. Some thyme. You can use fresh thyme, but just be careful because thyme is rather strong. So you don't use so much of that, huh? Good thing it ain't coming up like that. Looking good. Sprinkle it with a little. It's going to take a while to cook. Yeah, not too long. Little paprika. What that do? Um, the smoked paprika has a flavor to it. This just again I'm adds color. Right. Hush your mouth and enjoy the <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting on your nerves today. All right. <laughs> Hush. Hush Again, bouillon is optional. I'm going to add about three to four of these. Only, again, I want... If it's going to be homemade stuff, why not make it, make it good best. and flavorful? You want every bite to be... Because that's the last thing you want to do. You want to make... You don't right, you don't want to cook it. And you be like, oh man, I need to add salt and pepper to right, it. Right, afterwards. You get done. So you... And I'm going to add one more. Cause that defeats the purpose. Right. You might well add it to the You want, especially if you're making it for somebody else, you don't want them to have to go back in. Now I understand. You know, some people have like salt restrictions and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. and that's fine. But I mean, we we monitor yeah. our season and salt intake. But listen, some things, some things you just want that old taste to, mm. and this is one of them things. You know, you had chicken and dumpling in years. Really? Homemade. Alright, some people oh, add potatoes. I can't call my mom home. Let me not talk about it on camera. <laughs> she gonna get you. You know she gonna be here in a few days, so. Man, let me talk, not talk about that. She gonna get you. I'm about to talk about her. her Alright. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna let this come to a boil. And then, um, for probably about 20, 25 minutes, you'll know once the chicken starts pulling away from the bone. Or whatever and it's easy to debone then we'll be good after that then we'll make the dumplings dumplings really easy and then we'll put it all in there take that back dumpling is easy it's time consuming so that's why a lot of people go with the quicker route and use biscuits and stuff but we ain't using biscuits today so let's cover this up and I'm gonna wash these few little dishes and we'll be back Alright guys, so our chicken has been cooking for now for about 45 minutes to an hour. But the skin has already started coming off, so that's another sign that tells they're done. They're like Ooh, yeah. falling off the bone. It's almost like you're boiling your chicken to get ready to make your chicken and dressing for Christmas or Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the other thing about making it with the bone in because the 
bone in chicken always makes the better broth. So the other leaf it. Alright, so I'm gonna add in cans of cream of chicken. <laughs> That doesn't go in there. No, it's not. <laughs> Hush your mouth. You can omit this step and make you a slurry with like flour and all of that. But uh, yeah, I'm not doing all that. I mean, I have and I can, but I just like the extra creaminess of this. And I also like to do this because I like my on the my soup or the base of it to be on the thicker side. I don't really care for the soupy or the runny broth. Back on, on low, just so that the can stay warm. Get a little bit off the side, but <laughs> right, baby. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So. Let that cook, thicken up, and I'm actually going to add in some more. So you are doing more, okay? Yeah, because the dumplings have to go in, and they're going to absorb some of that moisture, and I don't want it to be too thick. Yeah, they're going to take. Who's going to take that away? And. gonna save some of this to actually cook the, the, to put in with the dumplings so to put in with the dump oh when you put the dumplings in yeah well that's what that means bro I'm gonna take out about one and a third cup okay. and yeah, I could use just normal water or milk for my dumplings but Again, I want the dumplings to have some flavor too, so I'm going to use that. And I could have used the stock from that I just made, but it's going to be too hot to fix with my hands and I ain't trying to burn myself, so. There you go. Look a little bit there. Alright, so as that cooks on down and yummy, yummy, so let's get for um, to make the dumplings. We'll be back. Yeah, so our broth is done. Right now it's just simmering to stay warm. All right, so we're gonna get ready to make the dumplings. So you'll need about three cups of all-purpose flour. This one, I'm not really leveling it like I should, so might be a little more, might be a little less. That's what we got right now. <laughs> All right. Wait, so it might be a little more, might be a little less. Only thing that I am measuring is the baking powder and the salt. So for baking powder, you'll need about one and a half teaspoons. And a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to add some pepper because, again, I want it to be seasoned. But I'm only going to do six up about a half a teaspoon. Alright, so I'm gonna 
mix that. You can whisk it if you want, but I ain't trying to mess up no more dishes. You got a fork, so. How you doing? Whisk. <laughs> and you just stir it. All right, so I melted a half a stick of butter. Add that in. Cause you're gonna need your fat. You can use like Crisco or lard or whatever, but I use butter. So just kind of folding that in. Okay. So now I'm gonna make a well. Could not get my fingers in it. I mean, I could. Okay, so to that chicken broth that I poured, which was about a half, a, about a cup, a little over a cup, I added two eggs, and I just kind of beat them to break them up. So now we're going to add to that well. Start adding in a little at a time because you can't take out. You can add flour to it. But you can't take the liquid out of it. Alright, and so you'll know when you need to add more. Right now it ain't doing nothing, so I'm gonna add more. So as you can see, it's starting to pull away from the sides. Can't do it no more. All right, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I might have to add some more flour. Just a little bit more. Because you want it to where it's not sticking to your fingers. Mm. Right now, that's what it's doing. You don't want to overwork it because you want nice tender dumplings. You don't want them to be too thick. It's just about where I want it. Let me put a little more flour. Yeah, in just a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. Any more? No. All right. So now. So like I said, you want it I just have a better working surface out of that container because it was cramped in my staff. That's my job. What? Sorry. All you gotta do is say flower please. Sorry. Alright, so Again, you just want to knead it to where everything comes together. And it's no longer sticky. Okay. So at this point, Gonna half it. And 
take your rolling pin and flower it, even though ours is non-stick. Still. Alright. So now you just want to roll it. And turn it with each roll so that it doesn't stick like that. You don't want it to be so thin like pie crust, but you don't want like super thick dumplings either. You don't want it to be too thin like pie crust, but you want it to be, you know, thin enough so that you aren't waiting for your dumplings to cook forever. Alright, so you can use a pastry cutter like I am, you can use a pizza cutter, you can use a knife. But I'm just going to simply roll them. You can make them as thin or as thick as you want them. No particular right or wrong way. Doesn't even have to be like the same size. Okay. So, who told you to put the flower back <laughs> Don't talk about your camera, man. So, at this point, you want to just sprinkle some more flour on the top so that they don't stick to each other. That's why I said this is the not so quick version of dumplings, but it's the good version. <laughs> All right, so and you want to just That's it. layer them so that they don't stick to each other because you're going to have to put them in one at a time. Because if you put all of them in at one time, they're going to stick to each other and you're going to be eating one chicken big. pie pie and not uh, <laughs> chicken and dumpling. But the flour is going to help them to not stick either. And it's also going to help thicken up your, um, your soup or base. So after this, I'm going to roll out the other and... We'll be back to show you. Oh, we gotta shred the chicken too. Drew's gonna do that part. So, so you gotta lose your cameraman for a second. Um, after that, then we'll be back to put the dumplings in, and they'll be at the next part. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Ooh yeah. So there's. The base for the chicken and dumpling. Man, that's lovely. Right now, I'm just kind of scrubbing the bottom. Y'all know with the cast irons and the Dutch ovens, everything sticks to the bottom. So, get my stirring in now because once I add the dumplings, I cannot stir. Really? Yes, because if you do, your dumplings will fall apart. Mmm. So what you add first, the chicken or the, the dumplings? Oh wow. Alright, so I'm gonna turn them down on low. Alright. And again, like I said, dumplings go in one at a time. So and try not to place them in on top of each other. As they start to cook and get done, they'll start to float up to the top. Mm. Okay. So it's just it, see, now they're already starting to float up. That didn't take long at all. They're not done. But but they're starting to float. So now you can kind of see where you've dropped them. And because you're adding the cold 
well not so much as cold but they're colder than what's already in there you they'll start to slow the or cool down the the bra like I said don't stir but you can kind of move them around, move them around. That's your hardest part, not stirring it. <laughs> and that took me a minute. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't make it. I want to stir. You don't have to put as many dumplings in there, but again, this is going to be one of our meals, whether it be lunch or dinner for the week. So, want to make sure it's you know enough to feed everybody well although it ain't nobody but us but still if like I said if you put them in there one at a time I mean more than one they'll start to mate and marry then it's one big thing so again I'm not stirring but I want to move them so that I have room to add more. Uh, yeah, so see, they're starting to pump up and the more they cook, they're gonna swell up and then they'll eventually settle back down. So if you use biscuits, same rule apply. Don't stir them. I suggest that you cut your biscuits in fours like you know in half and then cut it in half again all right well I don't want y'all to sit here and watch me put these dumplings in so I'll finish adding these and once they're all added let it cook again covered for about 10 15 minutes you'll know when they're done when the dumplings are cooked all the way through um, and then you'll be ready to plate and eat so we'll be back Alright, so our chicken and dumpling is just about complete. Like I said I have not stirred. I've moved around a little just to make sure that mm. they're getting done. Mm, they look good. Big chunky ones too. Alright, and I forgot to tell you guys you want to add your peas. That's if you want peas. Um I put these in the fridge so that they weren't still frozen. So definitely not adding that whole bag. So got those in there. See, I was about to start stirring. Mm-hmm. I see you. And lastly, our shredded chicken. Dump it in there. Yep. And just smush it down. I'm sorry. Shoot. I'm messing on my shot. My bad. All right. So. Stirring. Stirring. I'm moving. I'm not stirring. Same difference. Hush your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I added just a little bit more chicken broth to it. Man, it's not, it's not, not much. Give me a plate that right now. Alright, so see as they're probably could add a little bit more peas. You might have to get away with that bag. And I have not adjusted my heat. My temperature has still been on low that whole time. And at this point, if you didn't want to add peas, 
you're pretty much done because the chicken is already done. But since we added the peas, we're gonna let it cook for about another five minutes and then we'll be done. So we'll be back. All right guys, so we're done. And that's our finished product. Homemade chicken, chicken and dumpling. And dumpling. Mm -hmm. With carrots, peas, onion, and celery. All right, so let's, although we're not eating this right now, let's give you guys a little plate that's gonna be hot. Mama ain't ready, no food. <laughs> you ain't holding that, is you? Hell no. Mm -hmm. You got chicken all the way through. Man, that look good. Good job. Nice thick soup. Okay. Crackers. Oh, need more dumpling. Here you go. <laughs> Your homemade chicken and dumpling. All right guys, so again, I'll try to leave the link down below in the description box. It's really simple. It'll make, as you saw, a big pot of yummy soup. So be sure to give us those big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video on all of your social media, however you see fit. All right guys, bye. Hey, hey family. family, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, check out our latest video and be sure to subscribe. Bye, Bye guys. guys.